Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to explore Muse, and in particular, we're going to look at some of the bank and preset management systems on Muse. So to begin, what I want to do is actually copy a patch that's already stored. Right now, I'm looking at Bank 1 Patch 2, which is a patch called Muse Runner, and I want to copy it to a different bank so that I can make changes to it without overwriting this stored patch. So to do that, I'm going to hit the Copy button. That's going to make all of the 1 through 16 buttons blank, indicating that I should select which patch I want to copy. I know that's patch 2 of the bank that I'm in, so I'm going to hit that. And on screen, we can see that I've selected Bank 1 Patch 2 Muse Runner. The next thing that it's prompting me to do is select whether I want to copy the entire patch, which would be both timbres, or just a single timbre, which can be nice if I want to build a new patch off of an individual timbre in a different patch. But I'm going to go ahead and copy the entire patch. And now you can see the buttons blinking again, indicating that a selection needs to be made of where I store that new patch. And you'll also notice that the to button isn't blinking because I can't copy a patch into the position that I'm copying from. But I actually want to copy this patch into a new bank. So to do that, I'm going to hit the bank button and I'm going to select bank 15. We can see it update on the screen. And then I'm going to go back to patch and hit patch 1. So now the confirm button popped up indicating that I've done all that I needed to do to complete this process. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit confirm. And now, once I finish that, I'm going to be looking at where I copied to. So you can see that I'm on bank 15 currently, and I have patch 1 selected. The other thing to notice is that there is an asterisk on the screen now, which indicates that there are changes that have been made to this patch. And that's because copying doesn't finalize any changes. You could copy and then reload the patch in the same position without losing what was under there. But if I know that I want to copy and keep what I've copied, then I just hit the Save button. That's going to bring up the Save dialog, which tells me, do I want to save Bank 15 Patch 1 to Bank 15 Patch 1? And if I wanted to save it to a different place, I can just select a different one if I want to make a bunch of variations of the same patch without overwriting it. But for now, I do want to overwrite it. So I'm going to select Bank 15 Patch 1 and hit Confirm. Then it's going to bring up the Name Editing screen. And on this screen, I can use the Select knob to highlight a particular character. And then I can use the Value knob to change it. So let's say I want to add a 2 to this name. I can just scroll through the list of characters until I hit 2. And another thing that we can do is insert spaces or delete characters. So let's say I want to create a space between Runner and 2. To do that, I highlight the 2, I hit Shift and init, and it's going to take the highlighted character and shift it one space to the right. And let's say I want to delete that space. I can do that by simply hitting init, which is going to delete the highlighted character on screen. Another thing that we can do while editing the name is actually generate random names. And we can do that by the random soft button. So if I just keep hitting this button, it's going to generate a bunch of random names until I arrive at one that I like, which is beat reject. If I wanted to, I could go in and edit that name, but I'm just going to keep it. So I'll hit the save patch button. Now you'll notice our patch is no longer named Muse Runner, and there's no asterisk on the screen letting us know that Beat Reject and the timbres are what we have stored in Bank 15 Patch 1. Now if I wanted to just edit the name without going through the whole save process, I can do that by just hitting the Edit Name soft button. And then I'm just going to go back into the same screen, the difference being that it just says Save Name instead of Save Patch. Now the next thing that I want to do is actually initialize timbre B in this patch and start from scratch there. Because the diffusion delay is global and I just want to initialize one timbre, I'm going to go ahead and remove timbre B's assignment so that it doesn't hit the delay. And then I'm going to hit the init button and just select timbre B. If I wanted to initialize the whole patch, I can. If I want to just initialize timbre A, I can. But for now, I'll hit timbre B. You may have noticed on the screen it says that this is not going to overwrite the patch, and that's because it's non-destructive until you save the patch. So in the case that you initialize something you didn't mean to, it can always get pulled back as long as you don't save. And then the asterisk is telling us that same thing, that we need to save if whatever change we made is to persist. But for now, I'm not going to worry about saving it. I'm going to look at timbre B and listen. And you can hear that I'm just back to my initialized patch, which is a simple single oscillator sawtooth patch with the filters wide open. Nothing complex. 
But now let's say I want to actually pull a timbre from a different patch and load it into timbre B. I could do that using the copy procedure, but there's also the arrangement view, which makes it a little bit easier to get a global sense of what you're doing. So let's go ahead and hit the arrangement button. That's going to bring up two lists, the timbre A select and timbre B select. By default, timbre A select is highlighted, but I want to change timbre B. So I'll use the select knob to highlight timbre B select, and then I'm going to click it down. I could also hit enter if I want to, and that will do the same thing. So once I've done this, I can actually scroll through the list of patches, and you can see we have the bank and patch number here. So I'll scroll back to say bank 13, patch 13, called dance and stereo. Now by default, I'm going to load the B timbre because that's what I have selected, but if I want to select the A timbre, I can do that either with this soft button here or with the value knob. So I want to take timbre A from this bank 13, patch 13, and load it into timbre B in my patch one from bank 15. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And then the confirm button is going to pop up telling me that I've done all the necessary steps to complete this process. So I'll hit confirm. And now I'm going to hit save again, save the patch. I have no asterisk, and now we can hear that on timbre B, I have this interesting stereo pad, and on timbre A, I have that original pad from the Muse Runner patch, but now they're both stored as their own patch. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that the patch and the sequence exist as two separate entities inside the system. So if you save the patch, it doesn't necessarily save the sequence and vice versa. But if I look over at the sequence, the procedure is mostly the same with the one difference being that the seek bank button is a soft button instead of a dedicated button on the panel. So if I hit seek bank, I can select from any bank that I want to. I'll select bank 15 again and be on sequence one. And one really interesting thing that we can do with a sequencer is use the sequencer to load different patches from the patch side of the synth. And we can do that by locking a patch to a particular sequence before we save it. So if I hit shift, I can see this lock patch option come up. I'll highlight that and we can see that an asterisk has been added to the screen. So the sequence has changed and that change being that we added a locked patch to it. Then I'll go ahead and hit save. Same sort of procedure. I'm going to copy it, or I'm going to keep it saved in that same position. I can randomize the name. So let's choose diverse Brie, and I'll save that sequence. Now, if I go to sequence two, you'll notice that nothing really happens. I've just selected sequence two. But if I go back to sequence one, the screen is going to pop up and say, do you want to load the, pot, the patch that is locked to that sequence? So I have the option of loading both the sequence and the patch, or just loading the sequence if I want to keep the patch that I'm on. So I'll hit sequence and patch. And now we can actually see that if I go back to the patch side, beat reject has been loaded. Um, and so this is a really nice way of using the sequencer and tying particular patches to the sequencer if that's something that you want to, but they're not forced to be coupled by default. Uh, and as you can tell, we've added a lot of systems to make management of all your patches and sequences convenient and relatively easy to make any kind of changes that you want when using Muse.